So in my humble opinion, uh, certainly there are every form of exercise or most forms of exercise are very beneficial. Doing something is always be better than doing nothing for your health. But if I were to say, if I were to pick one uh, activity that is indispensable, it would be resistance training. And there's a couple of reasons. So certainly cardiovascular exercise, um, it's been much more well researched over the years. Uh, and indisputably, it has great effects on your health and wellness. But resistance training has many of the same benefits as cardiovascular exercise, but it goes well beyond what you can get through aerobic training, and particularly uh, dealing with muscle strength, obviously, and uh, bone density, and other things like posture. So um, aerobic exercise itself has very minimal effects on your strength levels, on muscle development, on muscle hypertrophy. Uh, even on bone development, uh, so certainly running has certain benefits to, uh, to bone, uh, but nothing in the way that resistance training does. And again, things like your posture, people don't even consider uh, doing, if you are sedentary and not doing anything, over time you're going to lose muscle, your posture is going to go, and you can do all the aerobic training you want, it's really not going to have these benefits. So that, that you just mentioned uh, two things that I was unaware of in the bone, bone density and the posture. So can you, can you talk a little bit more about that? Resistance training affecting bone density? Because yeah, that sure. seems very relevant for um, particularly post-menopausal women. It is. Uh, it, so osteoporosis, which is basically porous bones, it's when uh, over time in the aging process, your bones, if you are sedentary in particular, will start to degrade. And um, the 80% of osteoporosis, people with osteoporosis are women, uh, because women generally, number one, start out with less bone mass. Uh, and there's also effects of, as you mentioned, uh, estrogen is osteoprotective. So when women undergo menopause, uh, postmenopausally, they're going to have uh, increased bone uh, resorption, which is going to increase their chances of getting osteoporosis. And um, resistance training by pulling on the bones, a, a muscle pulling on the bones. So there's an interaction. Your musculoskeletal system is the muscle that allows when you have movement, it's the muscle pulling on the bones to, to move. And strength training really is the primary way to uh, strengthen the bones. So while you're strengthening the muscles, necessarily the bones become strengthened as well. And there's certain ways that are going to be more appropriate than others to maximize that process. But really, no matter what type of resistance training you do, whether it's light loads, heavy loads, et cetera, you're going to be strengthening bones. Whereas, and it's always, by the way, specific to the joint that you're working. So um, it's weight-bearing exercise in particular is what strengthens bones. If you're doing cycling or even uh, the uh, elliptical machine, it's really not weight-bearing enough to have s uh, substantial effects on bone, uh, bone development. And swimming, another uh, endeavor. Whereas uh, running, to some extent, there is ground reaction forces, but it's mostly specific to the femur, uh, to, to your uh, lower body musculature, whereas the spine and the, the wrist is going to be a major area for uh, osteoporosis, particularly in women. Anyway, long story short is that resistance training when done uh, regularly and consistently over time has profound effects on staving off the uh, potential for osteoporosis and even building bones, particularly when you're younger. Is there, are there, you said there are um, certain types of exercises that may, um, you know, be better or is there any types of exercises that you um, can talk about? I mean, Yeah, so it seems so... Most of the research has been using uh, somewhat heavy, moderate to heavier loading. I'm not convinced, though. It's, I think it's, a fa uh, it's a, an effect that we just don't have research that's really looked at uh, doing lighter load um, training with bone density. And I would sur surmise if you are training with a good deal of effort, high, high levels of intensity of effort, that you would achieve similar effects. Uh, but it also does seem that doing more multi-joint movements, uh, so multi-joint meaning uh, like squats, m movements that are utilizing more than one joint. Multi-joint is mm. more than one joint. So um, rather than a curl, uh, you can get better effects overall on bone because of the loading that is imposed. 
Uh, so again, not really great evidence. Uh, this is more speculative based upon the literature I've seen. Uh, so I, again, I, I'm a fan of any type of resistance training over or not. But if you're looking to maximize bone development, I would certainly say you want to include some multi-joint movements. And I think just in general, there's other reasons why you'd want to as well. In a, besides the squats, what are some other like rows, body... presses? Okay. Uh, I mean, push-ups. You know, okay. Any type of movement where you're involving more than one joint. For someone that doesn't like someone that's working with dumbbells, for example, who's not going to go use a machine, um, can you do them? Can you do multi-joint movements yeah, with dumbbells? I mean, shoulder press. Shoulder press. Uh, I mean, okay. chest press. You could, dumbbells are great. Sure. Okay. Uh, shoulder press, chest press. You can do squats. You can do a goblet squat where you hold the dumbbell here and do a squat. And, uh, so, yeah. Well, that was very, I, I didn't realize, I mean, I had a question there about bone density, but I didn't realize that uh, it really does play a significant role in, 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 that, in the bone densities. And it's really, it's really good to know about that. Um, muscle mass in general, aging, I mean, what about someone who hasn't, let's say, you know, they're more of an endurance athlete, like, throughout most of their, you know, young adulthood and they're, they're getting into even just maybe perhaps older age. Is it ever too late to start resistance training to help, you know, build muscle mass or to help prevent the atrophy that's happened, gonna, gonna happen? A absolutely not. So um, I, in my previous life, I was a personal trainer before becoming an educator researcher. And I mean, literally I was involved in the training of thousands of individuals and, um, I had clients at the time that were 60s, 70s, and 80s, never lifted a weight and saw huge benefits in relatively short periods of time. We carried out a meta-analysis on the oldest of old, which was 70 and above. Well, the 70 is actually not that. It's the, the new uh, 50 now is, is 70. But um, 70 plus years old and up to octogenarians, nonagenarians, um, profound improvements in muscle strength, uh, muscle hypertrophy within 12 week, eight to 12 week uh, training programs. Never, these are novice trainees who've never done anything before. Now, I will say this with a caveat it's always better to start when you're young. The earlier you start, the better. Um, because once you start losing, to get it back is harder. So, yeah, you can always improve upon where, where you're at at a given point in time. But trying to get back to where you were when you're in your 20s is gonna be almost impossible if you're not starting through your 70. However, if you start when you're in your 20s, you can maintain a majority of your muscle mass. And certainly, I would say this, someone who is not doing anything in their 20s, I've had clients in their 70s who were stronger and, and more fit than people in their 20s uh, who were, were you know, serious uh, lifters. So um, yeah, it's always best to start when you're younger. And I will say this too, for women in particular, um, and particularly in reference to bone density, it is very important to start early. Again, it's never too late okay. because you can get some... How some early? Extent. How early? 20s. I mean, as early as you can, but certainly like in your teens and 20s. Um, because you do build up a bone bank. I mean, the analogy I like to use is having a retirement account. If you, you, yeah, it's never too late to start, technically, but if you start when you're in your 50s, your retirement is not gonna be what it is if you start in your 20s. And there is this concept of a bone bank, where if you start when you're young, and particularly, again, for women who have the biggest issue with osteoporosis, uh, you end up uh, staving off the possibility of having osteoporosis. If you start when you've already lost bone density, it's very difficult to get back you know, you can stave off, you can certainly prevent the progression of osteoporosis, but getting back your bone density becomes much more difficult. So it's very similar to this concept of building up a muscle reserve, right? Where, because that's also, right, when you Correct. get your, I don't know, 30s even maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you start to lose the muscle mass. And so, yeah, so if you, like you said, having that, starting with that bigger reserve is always better uh, because things are going to be taking away from it. So you want to have like a bigger starting point. Uh, so, so that's really great to know because, you know, in particular for women, I think 
you know, and, and the, at least for myself in particular, and I know like many of my friends and growing up even, you know, throughout high school, I mean, we were always endurance. We were endurance athletes. You walk into the gym and there was mostly guys in there lifting weights, you know, the wrestlers, the, you know, and, and so um, I don't know that this may be changing now where women are, are starting to understand the importance of resistance training and building up muscle mass and bone mass through resistance training. But, um, you know, for, for me, it was always endurance. If I'm doing my endurance, then I'm, I'm checking the box. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm getting that exercise. I'm going to be healthier because of it. So um, this is all, it's, it's, it's really so important, I think, for, for young women, too, to really, it's easier to convince young men who, like, want to get the muscle. I mean, for them, um, they, they've got other goals as well in mind. But um, I think there's, there's now a growing interest in, in, in uh, bone mass and bone density and preventing osteoporosis as well. So um, that's really great to know. What about starting, like, so starting young, like, you know, can you start, like, in childhood? Absolutely. So there's compelling research now that children, uh, it kind of it's never too young to start, provided the child's maturity is such that they're able to to lift. Uh, I will say that always it should be done, especially early on, if you're dealing with children six, seven, eight years old, you want to have a fully supervised environment, even beyond that, until they are, you know, in their teens even. Um, but yeah, there's really compelling research um, uh, now that resistance training in youth not only is um, not detrimental, so I mean, it does not I want to dispel the myth now that it stunts growth. I mean, there's been this myth around forever that, you know, that training, if you do resistance training early on, it will stunt your growth. There's zero evidence. I would think the opposite because growth hormone increases with resistance training. Yeah, growth hormone really does not have the effects on, um, interestingly, even though the name is growth hormone, uh, that's, it's really not the driving force of, of development. Um, well, it is on height. Height, but, yeah. But well, that's what growth I mean. hormone is pulsatile, and the effects on growth hormone for it's never been. It's actually interesting. It's never been studied, um, but it's pulsatile, and the effects on growth hormone with resistance training are very specific to the um, one hour or so after the workout. But uh, it was thought that you would uh, injure the epiphyseal plates in the bone that would, you know, somehow stunt the growth. Anyway, zero evidence to that. Um, the issues can be that if someone is not, I want to emphasize, if a child is not emotionally and uh, mentally ready for that, yeah, if they get injured. But I'll say this, it's kind of, to me, it's always this weird thought process that uh, parents often have no, uh, no issues with letting their children play football and basketball. The possibility of getting injured and potentially breaking bones in sports and these you know, major sports are much, much higher. Resistance training is one of the safest things you can do in a supervised environment. So, so yeah, with children, um, again, very young, as young as six, seven, eight years old, there's been a good, compelling research on this, that they can do it. I generally say you want to start off with uh, lighter loads with them. And again, it's getting, getting them into the uh, feel for doing it. And look, when you're dealing with children, the most important thing is making it fun. Um, so if something is not fun, you're, you're forcing them to do it. Uh, it's it, not only is it not going to work, and you're going to have a rebellion against it, but it can also later on in life get them to a point where they're kind of adverse to doing that. So again, I think what's really important is to make it um, enjoyable for them, and it improves self-esteem. Obviously, it improves so you know bullying in children. I mean, th these are all things that can. Uh, help to stave off a lot of the issues that children can have, make some better athletes. So from a parent standpoint, you can get scholarships to make them, if that's the uh, avenue they want to pursue, it can make them better in their sports and lead to uh, just a host of positive uh, improvements.